I'm here to tell you Hillary Clinton will say anything, do anything, and be anything to get elected president. And what does the Democratic Party establishment offer? They are offering a third Obama term brought to you by another Clinton. As to Hillary Clinton, the charge of putting herself ahead of America, guilty or not guilty. So are we willing to elect someone as president who has as their role model somebody who acknowledges Lucifer? Think about that. Mm. After two days of gathering together the base, beating back challengers who were determined to make a complete mess of the process, being forced to deal with a plagiarized speech and the revelation of the eventual scapegoat, the Republican National Convention now has two more primetime nights to get their act together and start turning the undecideds around to their way of thinking. That without Donald Trump leading America, this nation is doomed. This has plenty of critics on both the left and the right are waiting for a cohesive message other than we're not Hillary. Be on the line right now. Have a take. Get ready to be involved. 1-877-NEWSMAX, 1-877-639-7629. Let the political animal loose from here. Let's get to work. Welcome back to the veteran Democratic strategist and speechwriter from Catamount Strategies, LLC, Christian Hanley, joined by senior contributor at The Federalist with a keen eye on politics, D.C. McAllister. Thanks for joining us. Let's get to work. D.C., I'm going to start with you. First two nights, it was supposed to be first about keeping us safe on the first night. Then it was supposed to be about putting America back to work on the second night. None of those messages got through to the nation right now. We're talking about speeches. We're talking about John Kasich. We're talking about Ted Cruz. The messaging is not getting done. Isn't it fair to say that Republicans, they want to win. They want Donald Trump in the White House. They want him on message. And the Republicans have failed in the first two nights at the convention, yes or no? I agree. They haven't got the message across that they need to on safety or the economy. There were a lot of missed opp opportunities last night, especially about the economy. Uh, I think that the Democrat, I mean, the Republicans have done this to themselves with the infighting and saying that Trump is so bad. He, he's on the defensive in a lot of ways, and his, him being on defensive is to go after Hillary. And we're seeing this time and time and time again. But I do, I do think it's helping him a little bit. Independents are actually coming over to his side and abandoning Hillary. The, the polls are tightening. So I don't think it's as detrimental as people are saying. Well, let me get to this right here. And Christian, hang tight, because I'm going to come to you on this one, but i got to follow up on what D.C. said here. You said it. Going after Hillary time and 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 time again. Okay, we get it. We understand it. Republicans know that she is the enemy. If you're going to keep driving a message home, is driving that message home every single day, putting the attack animals out there, really going to get you the extra voters you need and those independents that you got to have in order to win the White House? Well, what I'm saying is he is getting the independents. They're increasing in, in their support for him. But they're not increasing enough right. because the polls show that Hillary, the real clear politics average, still shows that she has at least a three-point lead. Granted, it's coming down, but shouldn't the message be more focused and getting away from the same old, same old? Well, I agree, but you also need to attack your opponent. And, I, and she has a record, a long record that needs to be attacked. I agree with you, though. There needs to be why to vote for Trump. But in this contentious environment that we have here coming out of, the, of this convention, it's not surprising that they're going after Hillary so strong. And don't think for a minute that Hillary's not going to attack Trump next week. She doesn't have much of a record to say that she's for, so she's really going to go after him as well. All right. So, Kristen, let me come to you. Hillary Clinton criticized the Republican Party. And again, D.C.'s right. Look, this is going to go on and on and on now until November. But saying that they were not discussing the economy on their Make America Work Again night. Matter of fact, she was tweeting, so what exactly did we learn about Donald Trump's economic plan? The video shows multiple speakers with their mouths closed, not saying anything as part of her tweet. In your opinion, then, strategically speaking, what is Hillary Clinton going to do next week when the DNC gathers together, she pivots and starts to go after these attacks? I mean, she doesn't really need to do much right now, frankly. I think it, the most important thing she can do is just point to this convention this week and say, here's your alternative. In terms of the positive message, though, and back to your point about strategy, uh, what the RNC is doing right now is kind of the opposite of what needs to be done to bring in independent voters, undecided voters. And I think Hillary will do what's needed to be done, which is have a message of, of invitation, of, of equality, um, and a welcoming message that brings in undecided voters. The problem with consistently attacking one's opponent is that 
for independents, for undecided voters, that's just acrimony. That turns them off. They want to hear a message of welcome, of invitation that will bring them into the fold, not more acrimony that will drive them away. And okay. I think that's, that's what Clinton will do. Granted all that, and, and, and I'll give you all that, but doesn't Hillary Clinton sooner or later, Christian, have to start tackling down on these attacks against her, doesn't she have to start addressing the potential lies, the alleged lies, the real lies, the comments that she has made, Benghazi, all these, look, I get it that it's been done before, but doesn't she have to get onto this right now because people look at her, they don't trust her, they don't like her, they think she's almost a biggest liar, uh, as big a liar as anybody else. She's got to get onto that sooner or later, doesn't she? Yes and no. I, there are no? Certain Seriously? Wait a minute. No? How, how can you not? <laughs> and, and I love you. I really do. But how can you not go after that? Uh, because by responding to a completely ludicrous attack, you lend it credence. You lend it credibility. And so for something that's completely, uh, that's emerged from the far right, the far extremes of the, uh, of the other party, and by countering it, what she would be doing is just, is just simply uh, giving them credit where it's not due. And, you know, from her perspective, and this is me putting myself in her shoes personally here. This is sure. not me talking for myself, but she's been under attack off and on for a quarter of a century now. And I think at this point, and this is me just kind of guessing a little bit here, but she's had enough of it. And she has no more desire to counter it. As far as she's concerned, the people who hate her are going to continue to hate her, and they're not worth winning over. What she needs to do right now is focus on and talk to the undecideds who still remain to be won over. All right, one eight seven seven newsmax Those of you on the line, hang tight. I'm going to get to your calls here in just a moment. I want to get something else out here. D.C., something interesting that came out this week, talking about the GOP's shadow convention. There was a quote attributed to President George W. Bush, who said, and I'm quoting here in this article, I'm worried that I will be the last Republican president. Do you think that is shared by a lot of other people in the Republican hierarchy? Uh, don't you just want to hand out the Kleenexes? I mean, <laughs> I, I, this is ridiculous. This idea that Donald Trump has just completely eradicated the GOP is wrong. I mean, and to say that the Bushes were the stalwart conservatives, I mean, they were good, compassionate conservatives. I mean, they spent more money than, than they needed to when he was president. So, I mean, he wasn't the perfect conservative Republican. And to say that he's the last one and then Trump is somehow destroying the party, I mean, it... it it just takes away from the fact that there are other politicians in the party. There are other people who contribute to the party's messaging. There are conservative messages that Donald Trump does have. He stands for gun rights. He wants to privatize stu student loans. He wants to um, get rid of Common Core. There are many, get rid of Obamacare. There are many things that he does that are conservative that he stands for. And to ignore that just shows that you're just whining and okay, that you're just okay. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to give you that. 60 seconds left. Christian, let me come to you on this one. Isn't there a fear from... Excuse me, lunch. Uh, isn't, isn't there a fear that if Donald Trump gets onto all those items, hits the gun control, hits education, hits things hard, that that's going to make a dent in Hillary Clinton? I, I don't think there's really much of a fear of that. The problem with, with Trump and his message is that right now his only message that comes through to to Democrats, to undecided voters, to everybody who's not already in his fold, is a message of white resentment politics. When it comes to any issues, concrete issues, we can't tell if he's a conservative, a libertarian, a liberal even. He's all over the board on policy issues. All he has is this message of fear and resentment and white resentment politics. So there's, there's no fear on the left about him being able to scoop folks away by focusing on those issues. Right now, that's, that's his message. And from a simple demographic standpoint, his continuing that and taking the party with him down that road guarantees future defeats for the Re Republican Party based upon demographic changes going all, forward in this country. All I'm going to say is this. A year ago, there was no fear that Donald Trump would ever get the nomination. <laughs> so let's be very careful when we talk about no fear because things change. Uh, Christian Hanley, D.C. McAllister, thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk to you both real soon. All right. About 90 seconds I have left. A couple of quick comments. Patrice is in Harker Heights, Texas. Patrice, you want more specifics from Donald Trump. Give me 30 seconds. What do you want him to be specific about? Everything that he stated that he can do, like get more jobs. How specifically is he going to put a wall up? I mean, he talks about it. And now it's getting kind of close to the end where he can actually disclose his ideas. I know if he did it in the beginning that Hillary probably would have killed every single idea that he came up with but i think to win the rest of the people and for people to take him seriously like myself 
he he starts he needs to start talking business. And there is a growing sentiment from a lot of Republicans. Exactly what you have just said. Thank you so much for the call. Brenda, you're in Grove, Oklahoma. I only got 30 seconds left here. Let me ask you this. Do you as a Republican voter not want Donald Trump to be more specific? Yes, I want him to, but I also believe that he will get the right people to be where they need to be to help him on the policies and everything. But what my main concern is, is for these Republicans that made a pledge to get themselves in there and help us to get him in office so that the Democrats do not win. If they don't vote for Donald Trump and and keep him in, the, help us, then they're, they're just voting for Hillary and we're gone. Then that's what a lot of people are feeling as well today. Thank you so much for your call. All right. Wasn't this Republican convention supposed to tell us how to keep America safer and why haven't they done that? General Michael Hayden will answer the call next. Plus, don't forget, 7 o'clock Eastern time tonight, Steve Mulsberg joins me. We bring you our special coverage of the 2016 Republican National Convention right here on Newsmax.